guys in this video i am going to explain the dielectric loss in an insulator so let's start let's take an example of a simple cable case where we have a conductor and conductor is surrounded by an insulation okay. and in this cable insulation when we connect a voltage source to the conductor current will start to flow inside the conductor and we can deliver power to any load okay so now we will have a certain current which will flow in the conductor and conductor will will be operating at a certain voltage v and then we have dielectric material surrounding the cable and the cable is buried in the ground so the surface of the cable is at ground potential or zero potential therefore in such an assembly there will be an electric field created from the conductor to the surface of the insulation and it will be radially outward okay so now this is a cylindrical capacitor which will have a certain value of capacitance for example represented by ca now in ideal case we assume that there will be no current flowing from the conductor to the ground through the insulation but that's not true in practice in practice we will always have a certain amount of leakage current which will flow from the conductor to the ground through insulation we call it leakage current and the resistance offered to this leakage current by the insulator can be represented as ra usually the value of the resistance is in the range of mega ohm or giga ohms which will ensure that the current flowing from the conductor to the ground through the insulator is negligibly small okay so in this way we can model an insulation which is from the conductor so this is conductor above so we have this one conductor which is at high potential and we have the lower end of the insulation at ground or zero potential okay and then we will have electric field in between therefore we will have certain value of capacitance so we can model this insulation as 
capacitance from HV to the ground and in parallel with RE. So we have, so this is our electrical equivalent model of the insulation. Generally, dielectrics or insulators, they have certain values of permittivity, which can define how good an insulator is. If the value of permittivity, absolute permittivity or relative permittivity are high, then we can say that this is a good insulator. And generally, we assume that the permittivity values are constant parameters for a certain material, but this is not always true. They can be constant at a certain conditions, certain frequency of the, of the applied potential, certain environmental conditions such as humidity, temperature, and uh, some other factors such as orientation of the uh, orientation or the geometry of the of the material but as soon as these parameters change the permittivity is permittivity will change as well so and in electromagnetic theory permittivity is defined as a complex complex value more precisely, which has real component of it, epsilon bar minus j epsilon double bar. Okay, where epsilon bar is related to the stored energy within the capacitance stored energy in ca okay and epsilon double bar is related to the power loss through RE. Okay, so this further depends on the activity. Of material frequency of the applied potential and hence the frequency of the electric field and environmental conditions okay so if we draw these epsilon bar and epsilon double bar in a complex plane then we can draw the epsilon bar on the real axis because it is a real value and epsilon double bar on the negative y-axis okay. then the total permittivity or the absolute permittivity will be drawn here Okay. 
which is the sum of epsilon bar and minus j epsilon double bar. So this is our absolute permittivity of the of the material. And the angle between the real component and the absolute permittivity is written as delta. And this delta is called loss angle. Loss angle of the insulator. Okay. So if this loss angle is higher, that means our insulator has high power loss uh, due to the conductivity of the insulation through the through RA. Okay. And if loss angle is zero, that means our epsilon double bar, which is related to the um, power loss, that will be negligible. And typically, our insulators, they are designed or the insulation of the material have such a property that epsilon double bar is approximately equal to zero. Therefore, epsilon is equal to epsilon bar and that's why in general we take our permittivity of the material as a real number. Then we have another parameter called dissipation factor. Dissipation factor is written as tangent of the loss angle, so tangent delta, and we can find tangent delta from the phasor diagram, from this phasor diagram, where the horizontal component, which is next to the angle delta, is our epsilon, epsilon bar, and we can draw the we can draw the vertical component also here which will be epsilon double bar simply by shifting the phasor um, at the on top of epsilon bar okay then in the in from this triangle tangent delta will be equal to you can see vertical component over the horizontal component so it will be equal to epsilon double bar over epsilon bar. Okay. This is how we can uh, determine the dissipation factor of our dielectric material. So coming back to the to the diagram equivalent electrical equivalent model of our dielectric material if I redraw it, so I have capacitance and I have the RA and we have the applied potential U. So we have capacitance and in case of shunt elements where we have capacitance and resistance as parallel, then we represent both of them as capacitance or susceptance and conductance respectively. So we represent instead of resistance, we represent it using conductance. And why we do it? Just to make our analysis easier and capacitance is represented by 
susceptance which is simply omega c we could represent capacitance as capacitive reactance and we could take the resistance as ra and we could solve the circuit to calculate the power loss in the circuit or we can solve them using the inductance and conductance we will get uh, we will get to the same solution in either way so as we can draw the impedance in a complex plane like you know that impedance is equal to r plus jx similarly our admittance which is inverse of impedance can be written as conductance plus j times susceptance okay so if we draw them on a complex plane so we can draw the g on the horizontal along the horizontal axis and we can draw b along the vertical axis and some of these can be represented as admittance y and then as we wrote here epsilon bar is related to the capacitance and epsilon double bar is related to the ra okay so we can say that d is related to epsilon double bar and b is related to epsilon bar and y will be related to the epsilon absolute permittivity and then we had the angle delta between epsilon and epsilon bar which was the loss angle so that will be the angle here delta okay now we can use this admittance to calculate the dielectric power loss how much power will be will be lost in this in this dielectric material okay so our admittance we have we know that our complex power is equal to vi conjugate and i is i can be written as i is equal to according to ohm's law v over z and we know that y is equal to 1 over z so i can be written as v times y and then we have conjugate of i so we will have conjugate of conjugate of v and y u and y so u multiplied by conjugate of u that gives us u square and multiplied with conjugate of y okay and then y is in fact equal to g plus b susceptance can be written as omega c so g plus j omega c and usually in electrostatic problems of dielectric materials we we don't know the value of g we are given the angle delta so we need to find the value of g in the form of delta and in the form of b so from this phasor diagram we can we can write tangent of delta 
will be equal to vertical component over the over the horizontal component now in this case the vertical component will be d and horizontal component is b remember vertical component is the one which is opposite to the angle so here this component is similar to g in parallel to g or if we place g on the on the top of b so now from here g will be equal to b times tangent of delta okay so and b is equal to omega c so we can write y is equal to omega c times tangent delta plus j times omega c okay. so we are usually given the value of capacitance the value of uh, delta so we can we can easily calculate the value of y and we are also given the value of uh, value of s value of uh, u square or u so we will determine s from this relationship and that will be a complex value in the form of real and imaginary so the real component will be our dielectric loss the power being lost in the insulation material and imaginary component will give us the capacitive reactive power across the insulation remember the average value of the capacitive reactive power is zero so there is no net power being lost due to the capacitance but there will be uh, a net power being lost due to uh, the conductance g or due to the resistance r a of the insulation material so the capacitive reactive power is a sinusoidal power which is uh, absorbed in the form of and the energy is stored in the form of electric field in our dielectric materials and the energy will be released during uh, equal amount of period in the next uh, next half cycle q is the capacitive reactive power so for a uh, for a good insulator for an for an ideal insulator we try to maintain our dielectric loss close to zero so if the dielectric loss is is close to zero that means it is it is a good insulator and it doesn't cause much power loss in the material okay so again we can also correlate the dissipation factor in the delta equal to p over q this is all thank you